You know what I'm doing here. I'm making videos about all the people in the smartest picture in the world. Today we're going to talk about the guy who started quantum theory, Max Planck. He was a great piano player and he was even considering doing it professionally. But ultimately he decided to study physics. What's funny is that when he decided to study physics, his professor told him not to do it. He said everything is already discovered and you'd be wasting your time. And that's super ironic because Planck's discovery of the energy quanta, which won him a Nobel Prize in 1918, opened the floodgates for all the new physics discoveries. Now you might be wondering what is quantum theory. Everything I'm talking about right now is happening at the same time as Tesla and Edison and the invention of electrical lighting. And physicists were interested in optimizing the amount of light emitted from heated bodies, like the light bulb. If you use classical physics concepts, you would think that the more you heat a body, the more light you would get. And then ultimately that body would start emitting a lot of UV radiation. But that's just ridiculous and it doesn't happen and scientists back then were really struggling to explain this. Classical physics was failing them and theory and experiments weren't matching. So Planck wanted to solve this and he himself said he got desperate. For him to be able to explain the results from the experiments, he said we have to assume that energy is quantized, which means that it's not continuous and that it comes in little countable packets. At the time he didn't even really believe that energy was quantized, he just said we have to assume this if we want our theories to match the experiments. But this assumption which is working goes against everything in classical physics, and he was a conservative scientist. So I can imagine him sitting there and saying, oh god, what have I done? But then Einstein took this concept and ran with it. He solved the photoelectric effect by using Planck's constant. I'll explain what that means when I make the Einstein episode. By the way, Einstein is a nobody at this point in time. He's working at the patent office six days a week, and nobody even knows who the freak he is. But Planck is a big shot, and everybody knows and respects him. If it wasn't for Planck, Einstein might have never been taken seriously. Sadly, Planck's personal life is a series of unfortunate events. He gets married and has four kids. He loses his wife to tuberculosis. First child, Carl, loses his life during action in World War I. Twin girls, Greta and Emma. Greta loses her life during childbirth, and then Emma also loses her life during childbirth, giving birth to a kid from the same guy, Greta's widowed husband. Irvin was the youngest, and he gets executed because he was part of a group planning the assassination of Hitler. Of course, when he's much, much older. You should know that every other scientist has lots and lots of respect for Planck. He's basically everybody's mentor. When all this stuff was happening, Einstein would show up to Planck's house and they would play violin and piano together. Please remember to like and follow for non-useless content.